starting to the top left. He called himself Vampire, changed his nick, a player for Team MVP. It is MVP Super. Super. Not to be confused with uh, Superstar. Please don't confuse them. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I beg you not to confuse those players. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> the bottom right in the blue, zoomed out here, the Zerg player for FX Open, he is. FXO Lucky. Love to take him to the slot machines. Yep. The story of Lucky is really that in the last Code A qualifiers, the last few seasons, he was always very unlucky. He usually made it to the finals and uh, won at least one map, but he never requalified for Code A. He didn't do that for a long time. It's actually quite sad. I'm really fond of him. We usually talk quite a lot when we're at the studio here with him, and it's just like a bit saddening to see that he always falls short. He's so close every single time, but at least it gives him the chance to excel in the team league here. So we are going to find out what he can do against Super, who already took down one of Lucky's teammates. When, whenever uh, we have these players like Lucky, for example, I talked yesterday about Mia being, for me, the shadow of Yu-Gi-Oh, actually. And when I look at Lucky, I feel like he's kind of the shadow of Leenok. Leenok is definitely like his go-to teacher, and they talk quite a bit. We've been with them at times where you can see the two of them talking about strategies, and Leonok actually has certain critiques of Lucky's play. And he's evolved a lot as a player, and I'm really looking forward to his run in Heartless Storm. I think he's somebody that could be on the level of Gumio, for example, in the individual leagues if he can get through that qualifier for once. The one thing that Leonok mentions about Lucky's play is that he feels that <laughs> nice earlier that he feels that Lucky is sometimes a little bit too hesitant, that he doesn't really pick the timings well where he should attack his opponent, where he should finish the game and therefore allows his opponent to get back into a game where he already has a lead. We will maybe see that today, I certainly hope not. I want to see a very aggressive style from both players if possible. Yeah. But let's just find out what's going on here. Of course, for Lucky, the hatch after pool, so there's no chance of being cannon rushed. Just to clarify for those fans, when you see that Gome TV is drawing, it's one of our prototype things we have in Game Heart where the Observer Legend can draw diagrams and highlight key things. Hasn't been totally figured out yet, but that's what that circle was, and look forward to that in the future. Um, I, I'm Like you said though, going into Lucky's play here, he has sometimes struggled to close games. It's kind of like Artosis in that fact, where whenever I watch Artosis' stream, I see that he's like a heavy, he never takes the opportunity to like kill his opponent. He's like, nah, I want my opponent to attack me and then lose everything and then I win. But third base goes up for Lucky here. And I mean, so many different styles are possible for Super. And Lucky is going to have to be creative and respond to what Super shows him. Third base now, of course, coming up for the Zerg player in this game. And his job now, his responsibility is to find out what exactly Super is going to do. The Ling at the front, there to see a potential move out, but more important to find out, is there going to be an attack upgrade? And if so, will it be Chrono Boosted? Or will the Chrono Boost be, let's say, on the Cybernetic score? What exactly is he going to do? Trying to, that we have the Overlord, find out if there's extra gas being taken. You need to know what's happening. We've seen this showcased yesterday when Crank was up against Kongho. Yeah, Kongho was able to scout his gateways and he just, he had a feeling, you know, he didn't see all the gates, but he was like, all these gates are scattered around. And for Lucky now, the most important thing is, are you going Stargate or Robotics first? Because without knowing that, he can't really respond. I mean, to respond to something, you have to see it first. Yeah, and that's exactly what we saw yesterday with Kangho, aka Lucira, when he went straight into the Burrow upgrade, counter the gateway push, because he realized there's no way you have detection. This time we don't see a gateway heavy build, though. We see a Stargate opening for Super which is very, very common now in uh, Protoss versus Zerg. And uh, let's see if Lucky is actually in a position where he can find that out early on and will be able to uh, just react accordingly. Yeah, there are several different Stargate openings we've seen already in Heart of the Storm. Void Ray first seems to be the most common, but you can do the regular Phoenix Cell. There it is, Void Ray first. Usually with uh, Stargate plays days, you do not see an Oracle when you do a Forge Fast Expand, just simply because the timing doesn't work out with the Queens. But we have seen, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, sometimes an Oracle thrown in there in the mid game to use the revelation ability to spot where the Zerg army is headed. 
Three queens, that's what he has at this point. Important, of course, for Lucky to spread his creep between the bases so that they can assist with additional queens if there is air regression. As soon as he completed his lair attack, which has just been started, we'll also see an overlord to the top left, Overseer, that is, to find out what's going on. But now with the additional gas, Lucky has to uh, kind of try and figure this out yet. As yeah. a Zerg, you always want to drone as hard as possible, and that's exactly what's Lucky doing right now. We don't even have him with the Roach Warren just yet. It's about time to drop it. So we'll probably see it in just a few seconds. Yeah, Roche Warren needs to be dropped eventually here just to be safe. Uh, the Void Ray has been shown, and now he knows, of course, Stargate starts two spores immediately. And Void Ray play is used in Heartless Swarm several different ways. One of the most common is to do a timing attack. We've seen this already in uh, WCS Korea, and we've seen it in the Team League in the past as well, but... It looks like he just wants to fake it and yep. goes into a box immediately. Six spore crawlers forced and the hydralis deck. And now it gets actually really interesting because what we see is there is currently no Roach Warren. There is a huge reaction to uh, the one boy that was spotted, which is six spore crawlers in total, and the queens that are, of course, also assisting this. And we have the hydralisks. And now this is interesting because we could see a timing here. We could actually see an aggressive timing by Lucky trying to make those hydralisks work and going in before there is a transition into Colossi. That timing works, but you have to... Oh, and he's going for the speed before he goes into range. And I love this. We've talked That's actually so about smart. this. Yeah. The reason being is now, what does your range upgrade help you? Only against defense. If you want to be aggressive, then if you go into speed and walk to the top left towards your opponent, your range upgrade will be done roughly at the same time that you are there. Exactly. And even if you can't take down your opponent, you should be able to kill the wall where there is the forge and the cybernetic score. Now, Lucky is forced to make a choice here. He's seen the third base. He starts the Infestation Pit, which will likely be for Swarm Host later on, but he's seen this and he's like, well, there's a third base now, and now I've got to do something about it. He's faked the Stargate. I actually doubt that he's going into Swarm Host here. One of this, uh, the builds that is really popular right now is going straight into Hive and then get Vipers out immediately. Like, Fast Hive and Hydralisks are so, so strong. He could go for the Swarm Host, though. It's definitely an option, but the more popular strategy right now is going into Hydra, and then immediately um, Viper first. If your opponent takes into High Templars though, then you want to have a few Swarm Hosts so that he can bait out the Storms. But we see him go straight into High. I think you're right uh, about the, the Vipers, because if going into Swarm Host in this case uh, is still a possibility, but it's a bit late for that. You know, you need some time to build up the Swarm Host to do something, but meanwhile Super already has his third base. And if you start to siege it up way late, yeah. it's not going to be worth it for Lucky anymore. He's even adding a Roach Warren in here to be careful. And when you have the, the Vipers out, you can just drag those Colossi right into exactly. the Roaches. Yep, that is definitely true. And the Protoss player, on the other hand, he has to react to this. As soon as he scouts it, he will definitely get High Templars out for the feedback to counter the Vipers. And then later on, he can also go into the Storm straight away. So this is a really interesting development that we have here. Lucky could try to hit those timings, but he doesn't even have to attack. With the army that he has, he can just sit tight, get those spaces that we currently see, and macro it up, and will force his opponent to move in. And that's exactly what we see right now from Super. He's trying to make this work, but so far, we don't have Vipers just yet. Yeah, Vampire's moving out here. He's He's got that, that really nice timing where he knows, and, and he knows because he keeps using these hallucinated scouts, that, okay, you don't have Vipers yet. This is my moment to move out with just two Colossi. Range is finishing up perfectly with this. He has a few sentries, and this could end the game, potentially. Yeah. The problem that Lucky has right now is he wants to play a game where Super waits for a long time, but Super is using a timer with double Colossus, and this hits exactly before your Vipers are out. So if he does that well, he can do quite a lot of damage. This is the perfect reaction by Super. I really like that he does it. And this is also the reason why Lucky went into the Spire, because he realized that he's going to face a push out with only two Colossi and not more. Exactly. He's going to want to have, like, if he can, eight Corruptors or so to deal with this, but he needs more time, yeah. and Super's not going to give it to him. Notice the zoom out here. We can see actually exactly how these forces are zoning yes. each other. The force fields go down. Now he can cut those hydras off and go for this base. A third Colossus is now here. The Spire was a little bit late for Lucky. He realized too late what was going on, and now uh, how it's this coincidence is that we actually have the Vipers roughly at the same time that the Corruptors will start to build. Even though Lucky has a lead in army supply, the composition right now until those Corruptors are out is much better for Super here. And the Roach is joining in now. Can he defend this? It's the going to be so difficult with the force fields. Yeah, but the Vipers are there now. He can use Black Blinding Cloud, you can use Abduct Blinding Cloud actually in a lot of those scenarios much better depending on if you have Corruptors already or not. Now we can use the Abduct, where's the Blinding Cloud? He's using the first one, there comes the Abduct! 
Yeah, nice pullback on the Colossus. And you know what? Even though he gets the abduct, the army for super is still going strong here. There are so many units for the Protoss player now, and he's taking apart the army of Lucky there. No corruptors just yet. The Stalkers blink forward, even the Void Ray doing some extra damage, and Lucky may be out of luck right now because Super has eliminated his army. He's obliterated it, in fact, and he blinks forward once more. He's now gonna be able to cut off reinforcements from the natural. And Lucky is in so much trouble. I just don't see him being able to hold here. He's got a lot of units on the way, but they're coming out too slow. Super is actually doing this perfectly. The timing for him is excellent. He's using exactly the few timings that he has with the strategy. Lucky is in so much trouble right now. He's stopping in supply. He's below Super already, and more units are just walking across the map. This is game. Yeah, it certainly is. GG. Wow, what a great timing that we saw there. It, it, it all came together. He has the two Colossi range finishes. Yeah. He knows the timing. He scouts repeatedly with the Phoenixes and he goes, oh, okay, you don't have Vipers yet, I'm gonna hit yeah. this timing. It is awesome. This strategy was really great. I love this game by both players. You can talk about so much here. At first, we really had the Stargate opening up by Super. He goes in, he shows Lucky what's going on, and Lucky, he reacts and is like, well, if you go in the Stargate and you commit heavily to it, I can take you out right now. But the only unit the Super build was one Void Ray. Lucky's reaction, a good one, going into Hydralis, which is so much better right now in Heart of the Swarm. And then he wants to go straight into the Vipers. And if you have this composition, you can actually do so much damage. You can either go for aggression or you can defend your bases. Blinding Cloud, Abduct, all works well for you. But then, the only problem that you have, you actually there are two scenarios. Double Colossus move out and going, instead of Colossi, into High Templar. If it's High Templar, you want to add some warm hose to bait out the storms to be safe so that your Hydralists don't eat the, swarm, uh, the storms. And if it's a double Colossus timing, you usually have to react with the, spoil, uh, with the Spine Call. No, not Spine Call, uh, sorry, the Spire. Right. And the Spire was too late. That was Lucky's problem. He did see that too late that he was facing move out. Ah. I, I love this. This but was really well played. Just a beautiful game by Super from yeah. the start with the mind game with the Void Rays. For six spores, like six, that six drones lost yep. immediately. And then uh, it, it's like, I, I cannot stress enough like what it means when you make six spores and your opponent doesn't go here. It's like paying money to lose six drones. And that's basically what happened because the spores were not useful in that game to him at all. But he has to make them when he sees the Void Ray because it's hard for a Zerg player to get in there with the Overlord and scout before Overlord speed is done, before you have the Overseers flying around. You don't know if he's committing or not, and if you don't make the Spores and suddenly comes in with five Warriors and there's a timing attack, then you die and you lose the game. So it was a really creative strategy from Super. I liked it. And what is Epic's Open going to do? How do they respond to this Protoss? I love this play here. Yeah, they're sending out Lino. Lino? Oh wow. my god. This is really unique to see him come out this early. I love this. I want to see Lino now against the same Protoss player that just defeated Azurk already. This is going to be so awesome. I love this. Not only the decision here, but also I really like that we have the same matchup right now and we'll see what Lino does compared to Lucky. Exactly. This is going to be a completely new game that we see going to the next map. And Lenok normally is the closer. And this begs the question now, who is going to close if Lenok falls? And will Lenok even fall? He's a Kodas player, ranked 17th in the GSL. And I mean, just look at his record in Team League. He's 16 and 11, nearly 60% win ratio. And his best position obviously is last. He always comes out last. Today is a different situation. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how this game is going now. And of course, this is a different challenge from what Super had to face in the last game. Before we go into the next Protoss vs. Zerg, we will have a five minute break and then we are back at the GSTL Season 1 2013 with Team MVP up against FX Open. Stay tuned and see you in five.